Welcome to Candidates Corner. My name is Mark Lindy and we at BCA have an educational role to inform voters about the candidates that are running for the most important office here in the City of Champions. It's my pleasure to have with me Jimmy Pereira, candidate for mayor. Yes, Jimmy, welcome. Thank you. Thank nice you. Nice to see you. Here. Pleasure. Um, second time's a charm. Eh, well, yeah, we'll uh, cut out the uh, third time. Let's go for the second. Go there you go. Then, so there you go. Sure. So you're back at it, running yes. for mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, we cannot give up in the city of Brockton. Two years ago? Yes. I would say you came pretty close. I, yeah, about 1,100 vote margin, yes, something correct, like that. Correct. If you start mind. playing with the math, you'd talk about 150 a precinct. Right. So uh, that's the simple math that I can do. I'm not right. good at math. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, What's different two years later about Jimmy Pereira and running for mayor a second time? Um, well, the biggest one, uh, you know, and again, my condolences to the uh, Carpenter family and supporters as well. Uh, uh, mayor Bill Carpenter isn't with us, uh, which is something that no one seen seen coming. Um, but in the uh, direction the city was going or is going is something that, you know, we want to keep going and also at a, in a, at a uh, rapid pace as well. So uh, what's different now besides that is uh, we're knocking on doors a lot more than uh, we were before. Uh, we're raising more dollars as well, and we're just getting out to the people more often than so uh, and getting more feedback also. And I know you happen to have a really good campaign manager, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Kevin Higgins, yes. Um, yes. I met him over in Whitman when he was a candidate right. for office, yes. and uh, I guess he works for a group, but he, he knows his stuff. He He's a good guy. He does. Um, so, and you're a good guy. Thank you. Um, so we just came off of the debate the yes. other night, the, the NAACP mayoral forum debate, right. question and answer session, whatever you want to call it. Right. Hopefully the next round mm -hmm. will have more than one right because right. I think it's really important that people get to see their candidates up close and I personal agree. I know there's going to be one that League of Women Voters is going to mm -hmm. work on mm -hmm. I know there's one that Massasoit's going to work on mm -hmm. and who knows I love debates I I, do I didn't have a TV set working last uh -huh. night so I couldn't watch the Democratic National one right. but I was front and center for the other one yes. so um, what is your number one issue that you think is the most important going into this race? What, 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 what do you want to do differently than what you've seen done in the mayor's office with a career administration? So as a, uh, in my profession as a planner, we know that it's a multi-pronged approach. Uh, everything we focus on is interdisciplinary or interrelated and intersectional. So there's not just one thing that I want to focus on. It's a conglomerate of things. So when we look, especially through door knocking and getting the feedback from our, our residents, which I'm doing today uh, as well too, down to the wire to the 17th, I'll be out there on the doors, is getting community feedback. It's engaging with our community members and it's uh, hearing what the issues are. And a lot of them are saying that, you know, they feel forgotten, especially they're on the east side or on the earth outskirts of town. When you see the roads there that haven't been paved uh, for years, uh, some older than myself uh, at 27 uh, going on 50 because of the uh, two children I have there. <laughs> uh, they, uh, uh, we've seen streets that, again, haven't been touched for over decades and uh, continuously so. So we want to update a lot of the things that are happening in the City Hall and throughout the city as well too. Uh, my priorities are to look at, again, uh, a conglomerate of issues when we look at public safety, uh, road transportation and infrastructure, uh, economic development in the city of Broughton. Kmart will be closing soon in the Campello neighborhood. We need to look at how we're going to uh, follow through with new innovative ideas and bringing businesses into the city. The casino is not coming to the city of Broughton as determined by the Mass Gaming Commission. So. What are we going to do at the fairgrounds? Uh, these are things and questions that I've asked, not just through my profession, but as a homeowner here in the city of Brockton, taxes keep going up and we're not seeing a reinvestment in the community. And we need to make sure that we're prioritizing uh, and bringing dollars to the city of Brockton and we're looking at more family uh, oriented uh, venues and events for our community, our growing community, and also more for our aging uh, community as well. Uh, we have a, looking at the percentages, is a big population of our elderly, a big population of our uh, youth community, but also a big population in our mid of uh, 25 to 30, 40, 50 age range, range as well. So we need to look at things that are going to appease all of our people here in the city of Brockton, uh, looking at age groups, diversity as well. So again, you have to look at all the different facets of a city. Uh, it's economic development, once again, bringing in businesses, not just to downtown, but the other economic sectors, north side, east side, west uh, and east. Uh, south side and also looking at uh, the uh, transportation issue. We have 2A Main Street and on September 24th uh, there will be uh, a, a presentation 
uh, provided by the uh, city planning department uh, and other uh, stakeholders on the 2A Main Street. But we also need to know that it's not just 2A Main Street, it's the network combined. So North Montello, uh, Montello uh, General, uh, Warren Avenue as well, and all the abutting streets along with that. And Downtown's Milman. not big enough. It, the, the, right. the original definition of downtown, Central mm -hmm. Area Revitalization District, right. you know that. Right, expands. This right. building here, yep. we're not in it. Right, and right. We're part of downtown. If you really think about pushing it out a little bit, right. you could literally go all the way over to East Ashland Street and you on could, the other yeah, side, yeah. maybe a little too big, but Warren right, right. Ave, Montello, yeah, you go Prospect across area. the street. You know, go under the bridge, yes, the yes. east side, talking right. about... Abutting yeah, the it's, it's, the buffers as we well have too, a tiny so. little downtown. Right, right. And there are other places that have much bigger downtowns yeah, that are experiencing a boom. Right. we got a boom going on here, but we also have other things that oh, maybe yeah. are a little bit of an impediment exactly. in the way. The, one of the questions I asked the other night at the debate was about... Father Bill's Mainspring, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. You're talking about Kmart closing. Right. There's the CSX <clears throat> property. Exactly. What would you do with that? As Great being question. a planner and, um, you know, it's hard to convince people right. to come to a place that maybe they don't feel safe. And exactly. nothing against homeless people. There's right. no services right. for them right. the minute they're out the door at exactly. 7 o'clock in the morning until they come back for dinner at night. Exactly. So what would you do? Uh, great uh, point there. So what we want to look at is the wraparound approach. So right now you have the shelter in and out approach. So you go in at 6, 4 p.m. You got to get out 7 in the morning, bring all your belongings with you. Uh, I believe with the wraparound approach, we would have an apartment style complex where people are able to sleep uh, and secure their belongings. It's a monitored complex. Uh, abutting that would be the cafeteria area where you're not just fed, but you'll learn your nutritional values and how to cook for yourself as well. Uh, there'll be culinary arts uh, practices and uh, opportunities available. Uh, abutting that would be the workshop area where you will learn financial literacy. You'll look at mental health and uh, substance abuse uh, services and practices also, but you'll also focus on workforce readiness, job preparedness. Uh, you'll look at other ways as well too, such as anger management and how to look at, uh, again, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. So the wraparound approach looks at all the facets. We're looking at short term, mid term, long term. Uh, you may ask, how do we pay for this? So there's different ways that I want to look at, you know, how we may pay for it. Uh, working, of course, with different stakeholders like Father Bills and bringing them to the table. Uh, we know that a lot of the homeless community are not from Brockton. They're getting dropped off from different communities. So I want to work with the state delegation and our regional partners to see if there's an impact fee that we may uh, be able to impose on neighboring communities. And of course, this may be a legislative matter, uh, but if you don't have everybody at the table, then how are you gonna find out the pathway to get there? Uh, so we will look at that as well too. And that will help funnel uh, dollars to this service area, because again, we know that not everyone's here from Brockton. Uh, and of course, we work with, uh, most importantly, other agencies uh, in the city of Brockton that will help uh, get these uh, uh, opportunities to the table. Uh, also with linkage programs. So these economic development initiatives and incentives that businesses coming into the Brockton can engage in uh, will help incentivize and encourage partnership with our, our homeless communi community as well. Uh, work Express is an, is an example that's going on now. Uh, there's also other corporations that hire homeless or hire those with Cori uh, issues as well. Uh, and that's what we want to do. We want to open up app opportunities and doors for those that want to get back and uh, engage in society. Uh, but there's a pathway that needs to be laid out. And as a planner, that's what we do. We look at the way to get there. How do we bring people together to the table to bring ideas there? And then uh, implement it and bring it into fruition from start to finish. One of the most important roles of the mayor is mm -hmm. the chair of the school committee. Yes. Okay, different mayors have approached that differently in terms of kind of a strong mayor, strong chair role. Mm -hmm. Other mayors have approached it as I'm just the chairman of the board and I'm going to preside over the committee. You have kids in the system. Correct. In the Brockton Public Schools. How yes. would you approach it? I approach it as I approach everything, as a collaborative approach. Let's go in there, uh, let's look at you know what needs to be fixed. Uh, especially like the demerit system as well, uh, looking also at occupational services and special needs uh, services as well, and also parent communication. Uh, we have a diverse community. We need to make sure that all parents know what's going on. I used to bring my report card home to my mom and just say, hey, sign here. This is something for a school trip. And she would have known I got all F's and uh, C's, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and I won't say all F's and C's, but I did have some A's and B's there here and there, especially in uh, social studies and uh, history uh, and science. But uh, there's things that you get away with, especially when, you know, whether you look at suspension and uh, reprimandation as well, too. So we want to make sure that everyone knows what's going on. Uh, there's services that parents don't know about that they can uh, have uh, assistance with, uh, especially with English second language, uh, and also looking at food uh, stability as well. So again, 
approaching it as a, as a conglomerate uh, and a collaborative method, bringing everyone to the table when you're looking at mental health, when you're looking at uh, guidance counselors, social services, social work services mm -hmm. with the kids and the students and the young adults, uh, transitional services as well too. We have a, uh, a problem with the uh, youth homeless and family homeless as well too, so we need to make sure that we're looking at that. And also making sure that we're looking at the economic opportunities for our youth transitioning from high school to college and entrepreneurial skills and also vocational opportunities as well. Uh, you were bored of the uh, Southeastern Folk Tech. I went to a vocational school. Yeah. I learned sheet metal and welding. I uh, wanted to learn uh, carpentry as well as my dad and uh, my father-in-law is, uh, is a carpenter as well. So something that you know we want to uh, continue uh, to thrive, uh, uh, work, whether it's working with the unions and the apprenticeship programs that they have, uh, or again, working with the uh, private industry coming into the city as well too. Uh, we want to encourage those opportunities and again, bring everyone to the table as well. Uh, but that's how you do uh, everything as a planner's aspect and also as a public servant uh, aspect. You bring everybody to the table. So. You mentioned communication. Yes. May a carpenter use TV effectively mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. communicate to the people. <clears throat> Sometimes you go to the meetings and there isn't two-way communication. Right. You cannot speak to your elected officials. School committee allows hearing of visitors. Right. Council does not. Right. What would you do to communicate as mayor mm -hmm. to the residents of Brockton and what's your communication style? Uh, so you hear this quite often. Everything that I do is, it's never just one way. You have to look at different options, how do you get there, because one may not work for another community or another person, and what that may work for that person may not work for the other. So we want to look at the uh, uh, multi-pronged approach again. So we definitely will be using media, uh, whether it be television, radio, uh, and newspaper outlets, of course, and journalism included, um, but also going out to the community members, going to where they are as well, too, word of mouth, and uh, uh, going to where people are. Uh, as public servants, as planners, we know that that's one of the most effective ways is to go into where people are. So whether it be the uh, adult daycare center or whether it be going to the Council on Aging, to the high school, uh, to the colleges, uh, anywhere you find a conglomerate or a, a big congregation of people, the uh, uh, clergy uh, and the uh, local organizations churches, as yeah. well, the churches, uh, and everyone included as well. And that's why I think it's important, again, as to have someone with that type of background, with that experience that knows that uh, it's just it's not just you know television, uh, it's not just radio, but it's everything included. Would you well. do town hall style meetings and uh, forums? Because as a planner, right, um, you've told me about, yes. uh, trend, you know, the, the bike, uh, Bicycle pedestrian plans. Pedestrian advisory. We yes. um, we're talking about the two-way traffic. Exactly. It seems to me that there aren't that many forums no. and places for your average person exactly. to come in. And it may not even be convenient for them. Right. It also may not be in a language that they understand. Right, exactly. So would communication <clears throat> also include diversity of communication? It would. So uh, every community or every organization that receives federal aid is supposed to be is supposed to implement is mandated to implement title six which means if you have a population that's one thousand or over you have to provide translative or interpretive services to that community uh, reason being because you want people that are coming to this community to be able to understand uh, what's going on and be able to transition and assimilate to learning English so it starts somewhere so it's providing uh, interpretive services where they understand the rules and regulations uh, so then they could go and see where they can get help so they can start the process of English second language learning, uh, whether it be the uh, community college, which is which does receive federal aid, whether it be city hall, which does receive federal aid, and whether it be uh, the regional planning agency, which also, of course, uh, receives federal aid, so does our library. So uh, these are things that the state and the federal government had, has implemented to help people come into the country and help educate themselves and how they can receive citizenship, how they can receive education, uh, so they can go to work, so they can go to college, and then they could help society, uh, is what you know what we've been doing time after time uh, uh, in history of America. Quality of life issues. Yes. When the mayor <clears throat> prepares the budget, mm -hmm. he or she, I'll just say he right, right now, right, right. Uh, decides what the priorities are, works with the department heads, fund, funds the budget. There are different ways to budget. There's exactly. zero-based budgeting, there's other ways to budget. Right, right. Um, how would you approach uh, the, the budgeting standpoint and how do you balance the interests of, um, you know, like, Obviously, being on the library board as long mm -hmm. as I have, 
I always have been hopeful that the city would view it as both, not, not just a, a frivolous thing, but the place where kids that don't have computers can go, right. the place that people can use the internet, take out materials that mm -hmm, they maybe mm -hmm, can't afford. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I always looked at us as both public safety and educational. We have the People's University upstairs right. in the mural, mm -hmm. okay? You got parks, you got mm -hmm. like the DW Field Park mm -hmm. and all the different parks and mm -hmm. stuff in the city. How do you balance that right, with question. the needs <coughs> of um, public safety, where you have to right. keep things safe, exactly. educational costs, and you got to deal with health insurance costs for the employees, mm -hmm. but how do you balance all of that? So what I find important from my own experience at the uh, regional planning agency is that you look at the funding pool, and there's different pools. So we don't just have the budget, which of course is very important. And in that budget, I believe we need to look at an internal uh, versus uh, uh, external audit so we can really define and know where the dollars are going uh, and where funds in uh, pockets are going, whether it be uh, revolving, uh, enterprise, or uh, um, um, the other uh, assets that we have available. If we look at the cherry sheet uh, that we have provided state aid, we can't always rely on that. So that's where I look at the other funding sources that will be available, whether it be through federal government or uh, uh, state aid as well too. So when you look at road projects, you get chapter 90 fund, but there's also other initiatives such as the Complete Streets Funding Program. The uh, governor just released $5.1 million uh, to help fund that initiative. Brockton didn't get a dime uh, because we're not really as prepared as other communities for Complete Streets Funding. Another opportunity is Safe Routes to School, uh, SRTS. So that funding goes directly to the school system to help with sidewalk and uh, transportation improvements uh, and other initiatives that will help educate our children on uh, better uh, safety practices when walking and biking and driving to school uh, and those are different assets that we look at now when you work at development or working with development agencies in the city you see neighbor works is now developing and paying for the neighbor works uh, initially the Kresge building mm -hmm. on the corner of Main Street and Frederick Douglass Ave uh, mass works is another uh, funding source that always works in the city of Brockton in major gateway cities uh, and we've had money come down from there uh, there's a transportation improvement program uh, from the old county planning council uh, that fund is actually allocating about 6.9 million dollars to the Belmont Street project uh, from Angus uh, up on uh, Belmont to the high school entrance. And it has been uh, implemented throughout the corridor of Belmont Street. And that was a uh, mass start in uh, old, old Colony Planning Council uh, project initiative. Uh, the uh, Center Street and Plymouth, uh, the Crescent and Plymouth Center Street Plymouth uh, initiative, that's something also about $1.3 million, but that's not coming till 2023. Uh, so that's why we need a mayor <clears throat> or a spokesperson that's going to go advocate for these uh, different funding sources and say, we need it in a timely manner, or we need it now. Or we need to work with our agencies to see where we can help allocate or match some funds to help move these projects forward. Uh, and of course, we may have to put some skin in the game, but that's why we also look at different revenue sources as well. Uh, whether uh, we look at innovative businesses coming into the city, uh, we do have uh, you know marijuana did pass, and we do have the ordinance for that, and we are waiting for recreational uh, enterprises to open. Uh, but you also have to mitigate with that as well too. Uh, you know, there's opportunities for that, and there were opportunities for that, and uh, some of those has passed us by. But again, there's opportunities for us to revisit that. Do you think that was handled wrong, and would you do it differently? I would do it differently. I think it would be more transparent. I think I'd make sure to really receive feedback from the people and see if you know we are able to make changes instead of the uh, 500 foot buffer, why not 750 to 1,000 uh, and look at other opportunities or overlay districts. So zoning is an issue as well too and look at how you could better zone it so it's uh, in adequate spaces. Uh, land use practices, which means that you know if you remember SimCity, there's certain places you put uh, you know enterprises and put businesses and there's certain places you don't put them near around. So we would look at that of course we would make sure that we're working with the cannabis commission and looking at the uh, equity program that they have for those that were uh, disenfranchised through uh, years and years of uh, uh, abuse or practices because of uh, the drug law the war on drugs as we may say uh, and also look at how we can make sure to look at the future of it as well too because it's not just uh, recreational marijuana use it's medical use uh, there's auxiliary auxiliary services as well such as transportation distribution cultivation of it uh, the plant itself uh, there's materials that can uh, 
uh, come off, uh, you know, that are collateral from that as well too, whether it be uh, ethanol, oil, uh, clothing, textile material as well, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are all jobs, you know, that we could be bringing to the city with livable wages. Uh, and that's how you advance your community is making sure that when there's an opportunity, uh, which there will be more, uh, especially working with the state uh, that we know is coming down the pipeline, uh, we need to be ahead of the ball uh, and make sure that we're preparing for these assets or these opportunities so our city can flourish. Uh, that's the most frustrating thing to me. Uh, it's the most stressful thing is that when you see something that can help the city, but it's just disintegrating right in front of your face. And you know, for me, that's what keeps me up at night. We don't even have an evacuation route available for the city. We don't even have wayfinding management for the city. And hopefully that will be coming. Uh, but if not, uh, if elected, those are the things that I will be prioritizing as well. Bicycles for the city. We don't have them. We don't no, have we don't. the racks of bicycles so and stuff. You like. won't get that if you don't have destinations. You know, where are you going to ride it to? That's a big question. D.W. Field Park, right. Okay, so let's talk about D.W. Field Park. Yes. One of one, someone I know uh, has suggested that up in Lowell, there's a national park service that uh, that deals with the uh, um, you know the, the mills. The mills, um, right? And right, right. there are park rangers. Right. And his suggestion, <clears throat> um, and I'll say who it is. It's Patrick Quinn. He mm -hmm. suggested He's that um, Brockton have a park ranger, ranger right. uh, and 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 take that jewel, mm -hmm. 700 acre jewel that there's a trust fund for right. that runs it. Now the golf course has been all taken care of. It's right. it's it's now. A championship golf course. It is correct. The park needs help. It does. It definitely I needs agree. help. It's so, a, as a planner, do you think that's a good idea? Is I that think something? It is. it is, and it's something that I would entertain. And that's why I also like listening to community members. Patrick Quinn is an outstanding and intellectual person who has great experience in different uh, sectors, especially in the film industry, one that I share uh, yeah. uh, uh, a great desire and like for as well. Um, but D.W. Field Park is a Frederick Law Olmsted Park. Frederick Law Olmsted created, he's a landscape architecture, uh, you know, of course, past years ago, but he designed Central Park, designed D.W. Field Park, designed the Emerald Necklace in the city of Broughton. There's other parks, uh, I mean, uh, the Emerald Necklace in Boston. There's other parks in the city of Broughton, like the Salisbury Park, I believe, yeah. that was designed by him as well. And we need to get back to the neighborhood parks and the neighborhood schools and making sure that we're looking at the neighborhood network as well. Um, but we're knocking on doors, I'm hearing a lot of complaints about people using the neighborhood streets as speedways. There's different tactics that have been implemented. You'll see it in Cambridge, you'll see it in uh, Alto, uh, you know, in different places of the country uh, as well, in different pl places uh, of, the, uh, of the world as well, Copenhagen, uh, Denmark, uh, and uh, other places of the sort. So, we want to look at the same uh, protocols and same initiatives and more as well too because Brockton has a lot of potential. Uh, we can connect these parks. We could look at off-road uh, transportation or off-road uh, pathways as well, bike paths uh, mm -hmm. and uh, um, walkways as well. Uh, you see it again in other cities, but why not Brockton? So, and you've seen the change as well too. As soon as we did have or implement, hired a, a full-time planner and you could start to see the changes. Now imagine if we have a mayor that has that same background, but also knows the network and the fabric of the community and the community members as well. Uh, and has, has built relationships with not just local municipality, but our neighboring community communities, the state and the federal government as well. Well, if you think about it, the planning department back in the day, early 80s, before Prop 2 and a half was mm -hmm. 10. Mm -hmm. We had a planning department of 10. 10 people. And they started right. Mainbrook Development and then it died in 82 right. because all of the funding went away. Leaders. And then at one point, we didn't have a planning department at, at all. all. Right, exactly. Now it's being rebuilt. Now right. it's coming back. And it's and growing as well. We yeah, have a which conservation is good. Uh, commission uh, 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 planner there as well too. So you have to look at the economic, you have to look at the environmental, you have to look at the transportation and everything else in between as well. And that's what we want to do, working with the Brockton Redevelopment Authority to make sure that our housing stock is diverse. Um, so one thing that I go back and forth with Patrick Quinn about is about affordable housing. So we need to understand that it's not just uh, low income. Uh, it's, again, diversifying the housing stock. So you need to look at 55 and older. You need to look at working families. You need to look at transit-oriented development and smart growth, which isn't, you know, it's just one piece to the puzzle. Uh, and where do you apply it as well to make sure that it's going to ensure a uh, cohesive and growing manner for the community as well. Transportation is very important. So working with the Brockton Area Transit Authority, 
that, uh, working with the MBTA, uh, the expansion of South Coast Rail, which is going to be uh, putting at least $600 million worth of projects in 2020. So we want some of that uh, on our three uh, uh, MBTA stations and the viaduct and the uh, track that goes along that. So uh, it's a lot of projects, a lot of things that, you know, again, will be coming down the pipeline. So we need to be ahead of the curve ball. Uh, and through my experiences and my engagement, not just, again, at the planning agency, but working in Springfield as a healthy design coordinator, working with the Department of Youth Services and at-risk youth and looking at workforce readiness and re-entry into the community. Uh, and uh, leadership and role model uh, positions as well too. So uh, we look at all facets again. That's something that I've experienced and I've continued to work with and it's making sure that all of our pistons are going, all of the uh, nuts and bolts are tightened up and ready to move forward because again, this once was a innovative, thriving city and I know we can get back over there. Education, industry, progress. That's yes. in the city seal. It is. Exactly. It is. So I got the five minute queue. I think we have wow. about four Already. left, wow. believe it or not. <laughs> I want to make sure there are a couple of minutes at the end yes. for you yes. to talk directly to the voters. Um, you, you mentioned youth, okay? Yes. How do you get youth engaged? How do you get youth inspired to be the future mm -hmm. leaders of Brockton? I'm going to give you like a minute on that sure. and then wrap it into your closing See, statement. It's very difficult um, to make that happen because there's a lot of obstacles and there's a lot of uh, division and uh, things that pull our attention away from those that the things that matter. So growing up, I've always seen, you know, whether it be the music videos or the films of uh, the person with the big chain or the person with, you know, the, the, the biggest person in the room. and Reality is that's not what is interesting to a lot of people. That's not what is cool to a lot of people. That's not going to get you far. Uh, it's going to get you two places, either dead or in jail. And I've lost a lot of friends to the, to the cemetery, and I've lost a lot of friends to the prison system. Uh, what I'm doing now is something that not just I can be a proud of, but our whole community can be a proud of. I was an average youth went to the foster care system. I've been through my ups and downs, but through my trials and tribulations, I continue to persevere. Uh, I've seen opportunity in front of me and I've made sure to uh, take hold of it and engage and make sure that I put all that I can into it as well. Uh, for our children, for our average youth, and for those that are going through the transition, whether you're in school or uh, on your tough times, know that as long as you do not give up, there is a way. Uh, and and I'll go uh, into what we're doing now is making sure that, you know, in 2017 that we work hard for the community. Uh, September 17th, uh, we'll make sure to uh, get everyone to the polls and hopefully uh, walk away with the success so we can go on to the uh, next chapter in November. I was taught to vote at a very early age. I've never missed an election. Even when I went to college, I voted absentee. Exactly. And that was the one vote election right. in Brockton in 1981. It was exactly. quite interesting. So I'm going to give you about a minute and a half talk to the voters directly and tell them why they should elect you on yes, September 17th. Thank you. Uh, and to the voters, again, my name is Jimmy Pereira, mayor candidate for the city of Brockton, ran in 2017. And if you know the Brockton spirit, we don't give up. We make sure to put up a good fight. Uh, and to everyone here in the city of Brockton, please, please get up, get out and vote September 17th. It's the, one of the most important things you could do. Uh, all politics are important, especially local politics. Uh, and my name is Jimmy Pereira. I'm third on the ballot. I grew up in, and I was born and raised in the city. I know the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, been in situations where people know that Whenever you call me, I am there, uh, and I'll be the first to show up uh, and the last to leave because my heart uh, pours for this city, uh, and I've uh, gone to different places, and I've seen that we can be uh, the shining city in the Commonwealth. Uh, and with your vote, I hope that we can get there sooner than later. Uh, again, thank you for your vote. I uh, will be on the ballot September 17th, third on the list. Hopefully, we'll come in first. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, that, Jimmy. Sir. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Good luck. Mine. Um, Appreciate it. Most of all, importantly, Tuesday, September 17th is your opportunity to shine as a voter. Show people that the city of champions are truly champions by the turnout. Don't, don't be 4%, don't be 10%. Mm -hmm. I've heard 20, 25. I'd love to see 60. I'd like yes. to see a real majority. So check out the candidates, watch BCA, read, be educated, meet the candidates in person. There's plenty of opportunities to do that, but most importantly, vote. It's your right. It's your privilege, and people fought and died for it. Exactly. Thanks for watching.